we're back for season three, episode four, with Caro Boquin from Plessy, Brazil. So this is gonna be a good one. Hi, Caro. Nice new hairstyle. Hi, Gabby. Thank you. It's so nice to see you again. Yeah, it's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Jess was telling me that you got reassigned to another position, so I want to hear all about this. Tell us a little bit about Plessy, Brazil. What's the goal? I'm so excited about Plati Brazil. We're creating new courses and it's a lot of fun. We have around 60 courses, 64 courses to be exact, in Plati Brazil. And we are creating more content. We are bringing back some teachers that already recorded with us, teachers with a lot of experience, not only as teachers, but also in their field. So it's been a lot of fun working again with them. A lot of new things coming up, uh, a lot of new features, improvements for Brazil. So yes, it's, it's been exciting. It's been a lot of work, but very satisfying. Ooh, okay. <laughs> now, a little birdie told me, Caro, that you were born in Rio de Janeiro. Is that true? Yes, I was born in Rio. This is a love story now. My mom met my father. My father is Honduran and she is Brazilian. They met in Sao Paulo and then they went to study in Rio de Janeiro. So I was born in Rio and we lived a little bit in Brazil and then we moved to Honduras. And that's where I learned Spanish and English at the same time. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> Okay, that I did not know any of that. Now my mind is already blown. We're only in the first two minutes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it was fun because if you think of this little, little girl, like four years old and mixing every language, Portuguese, Spanish, and English, I would speak to her in Portuguese with my teachers in English and with the rest of the family in Spanish. Ah, that's amazing. So when you were mixing all of these languages, which of course happens. When did you finally get it straight? How old were you at that point? I think that I was about seven, I would say, when I started like getting it everything correctly. Like, okay, this is one, this is the other. Since we were living in Honduras, maybe if we were talking fast, we would mix in a, a word in Spanish there. Well, that's nice that you have the, the mixed heritage too, but when you see other people who are Spanish speaking, what are the common mistakes that people make in, in Portuguese? The R in Portuguese, when a word starts with R, it sounds like a J in Spanish. For example, my mom's name is uh, Rosa in Spanish or Rose in English, but in Portuguese it's Rosa. So that's a, a common mistake, people trying to make the same sound because maybe the word is spelled exactly the same as in Spanish. And it, it's fun to see all those differences when people get amazed, like, okay, it's spelled the same, so it should be spoken the same way. We are doing a group in Platzi to learn Portuguese because a lot of team members want to learn Portuguese. So we get together every Friday, we read out loud and we do activities. That's the space that I have seen these types of things. Like the, the R is the most common one. <laughs> Yeah, we have the same thing in my husband's language and the sister language is like Spanish and Portuguese, but it's called Tigrinha and Amharic. So they have a few letters that in Tigrinha, it's just one sound, but in Amharic, depending on the context, it could be two different sounds. So wow. I guess it's the same thing. If you're new, then you, people can tell, oh, she's new. <laughs> <laughs> I think people are now more open to that and they try to help you out. Ah, no, it's this way. I don't know. Maybe I have found myself in those spaces where people are nice about it. Yeah, most of the time people are pretty nice. Then you can laugh about it together and then they'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that Jess must have told you a few stories about that. He has really fun stories about mixing up uh, definitions and words in the languages. <laughs> Well, since you bring it up, do you have one? <laughs> no, you know that what happened uh, like recently, since I'm learning Italian and it's so similar to Portuguese and to Spanish, I was writing this word text. So in one language, it was testo with an S, I think it's in Italian. And then in Portuguese, testo with an X, that was like, a moment that I was like, okay, wait, concentrate. In which language are you writing? <laughs> Since it was my mom, I, I asked her. 
<laughs> because in love is like okay no pressure yeah no pressure <laughs> no it's better that it's it's with her not someone else or for work <laughs> <laughs> well what should someone do if they have one of those moments and it is for work what options do they have I would make the correction, like be natural about it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm mixing it up because it happens. If you know different languages, you can mix it up. You show that you are trying and that you are doing your best. Take it naturally. We all make mistakes, so that's fine. Yeah, that's true. You gotta own it. Yes. And then you can come and, and share the story <laughs> in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please do that people. <laughs> Now, this is backtracking a little bit, but Platzi Brazil is not your first time working with Platzi. You've been with them for about two and a half years so far. I'm sure that will continue in the future. But how did you find out about them? How did they find out about you? Oh, that's a, a good story. My husband, he's an engineer and he followed Platzi since they started. And it, then he told me about them. He said, hey, you should check out this platform. They've got really good courses. And so I started studying there. And then he saw a Platzi Live and they talked about having courses in Portuguese. He told me, hey, look, they're having courses in Portuguese. What if you apply there? I thought, yeah, sure. Why not? I'll send an email. I, I sent out this email telling my story like, Hey, I was born in Brazil and I live here and I know these languages and maybe I could have both. And then I got a reply from Christian. He's one of the founders and we had a call and he was really nice. We followed up really fast and about a month and a half, I was in Colombia to work in Platzi. That's the story. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> it was a very fast, but very exciting because I was born in Brazil, but I went at a young age to Honduras. So Colombia was a totally new and different place for me. Culturally, we speak Spanish too in Honduras, but there were some words that maybe meant something different, even if it was the same language. <laughs> so it was a process of adapting and, and of being humble enough to like, Okay, I'm, I'm learning. I still learn new things every day <laughs> in regards to the culture and everything that there is to know about the place. Yeah, that's true. It's funny that you mentioned that with the same language, but totally different cultures. Just like yes. in with English, people from the UK speak English, people from America, Canada speak English, but we're all totally different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what was one thing that you saw when you first moved that you're like, what is happening? <laughs> I think that the jokes between the, the team, because we used to go to the office and maybe they would laugh about something and I maybe wouldn't understand what it was, or maybe in reference to a national commercial that I didn't know of, but my colleagues are super nice. If you don't know something, they will help you. Even if we, if we were joking, if I didn't know something, they go, Hey, look at this link. This is what we're talking about. So they were super nice uh, in, in that aspect. Or for me, ahorita means right now, but for someone here, ahorita could be uh, at any time that you want <laughs> but now. So maybe I would say I will do something now, ahorita for me. And they would think, okay, she's going to do it later. <laughs> ah, okay. That's nice of them to let you be in on the joke. Hey, this is what we're talking about. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's also the part of the humbleness. I'm not going to laugh and, and I don't understand. I would ask, okay, what is this? <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's good. Cause I've seen people who they totally didn't get it. And you're like, why are you laughing? Did you understand? I <laughs> know. <laughs> that is a funny moment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, I got to say that I appreciate what you did for me when I was working with Plessy last year. Just like you said, Christian followed up with you like, like that, ahorita, <laughs> but in the Honduran ahorita way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you did the same thing for me when I started with Plessy last year. So I reached out and we had a meeting almost immediately. And working with Plessy since then, Clever Hybrids has expanded. So I really appreciate that. 
Oh, that makes me happy to hear that. And that we've done more than one chorus. And it was a lot of fun also recording with you and the whole process. And I really love that you were also very, very quick following up like, hey, I did this. And I, I love that also, that uh, proactive <laughs> attitude. Uh, yes. Yes, it was uh, uh, really nice also working with you and I'm very happy that Clever Hybrids is also expanded. I've seen a lot of what you're doing and I think it's amazing that you're doing this podcast, that you have the classes and a lot of work on social media. One thing that I remember right now, I think it was very sweet that you joined a group of students that were practicing on Saturdays and that you help them out with their English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a good time with them. They asked some really good questions that I had to sit there and be like, Hmm. Uh, <laughs> and think of something. <laughs> it's interesting. Yes, that's why when people ask us questions and we're teaching, we end up learning because, okay, we can explain this this way. So yeah, it's very cool. A great experience. Yeah. Sometimes the best thing is on the job training. Got to get that OJT. Yes. <laughs> OJT. <laughs> that sounds like juice or something. <laughs> Not the OJ, but the OJT. Yeah. <laughs> now, I want to ask you something, Caro, because everybody's like, be an entrepreneur, be an entrepreneur. But intrapreneurs are important, too. Could you explain what the difference is? You're an entrepreneur, I think. Thank you. Yeah, I read something about being also innovative. And, well, actually, I think you can help me explain the difference. <laughs> Gabby, why would you say I'm an entrepreneur? Now I'm interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. This is like the third interview where the interviewee asked me a question. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So with intra and entra, those mean different things. Entra means outside. Intra means inside. I know it sounds like almost the same thing, but one starts with an I and the other one starts with an E. So entrepreneur is someone inside of a company who is innovating who might not be the founder they're like yeah i'm gonna do this and we're gonna do this they're like a team leader like caro <laughs> <laughs> entrepreneur is someone like freddie at platzi or hopefully one day someone like me <laughs> who is working on some type of vibe that they're trying to present to the world to get them to focus on something Yes, they give us a lot of, of freedom. If we have a good idea to go, go ahead, do it. And and more like, okay, don't ask, just go, do, do. So I, I love that because it's a great chance also to, to do a lot of experiments. Someone I, I worked with very closely, her name is Isis. She is very like, let's do this and has a lot of energy and a lot of great ideas. So I love working with her. That's also one thing that I like about her. I would always have the same attitude, like, yes, let's do it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> now you're also on a podcast. Are you still doing the podcast, Speak English with Isis and Jess? Yes, now it's called Plutzy English Academy, and we have a new episode each week. Every Friday, there's a new episode, and it's a lot of fun recording it. Since we have so many different areas of expertise within Plutzy, we talk about those different subjects as well in the podcast. I think it's a great way to, to learn a new language, to also maybe to Im try to imitate and try to practice. We also ask students to tell us. For example, on Twitter, we use Twitter a lot, which topics you would like for us to discuss in future episodes. So we have done uh, the episodes that students ask us to create. We look for information, create the dialogues, and, and then we record it. And it's really fun. We have a great production team that help us out with the episodes. I really like it. And I like also that there's this part of learning new meanings, learning new words. We also have a trivia question, then we have the content, and in the end of the episode, we reveal the answer to the trivia question. It's really great. It's a short podcast. You just need maybe about 10 minutes to listen to it, so I think it's a great way to practice. Oh, that's a good idea. Be like, wait until the end. Five uh -huh. minutes. <laughs> nice. Yes. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Getting ideas. <laughs> yeah. But you were talking about how Platzi has all of this different expertise. Yours is global marketing. So I'm going to ask you a little bit about that, if that's okay. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> We've been hearing a lot of 
from people about webinars versus live streaming? What should each one be used for? Both can be useful. Well, now in both, you can ask questions and it also has different platforms. I know lives are very popular now, so they are great. I think both can be useful depending on your needs or what you want to get uh, across from that or your objectives, then you would use one or the other. In a previous job, we used to do webinars almost every week, but now I've heard more about live uh, experiences more than webinars. Yeah, that's true. I've been seeing more lives too. I think it's also because of the pandemic and more people at home, more people are not only working online, but getting all the, that content, they want to learn more. That's why people are joining. It's interesting that, you know, my, my parents, I'm, I'm speaking a lot about my parents. <laughs> no, tell us about your parents. We want to know. Tell us. <laughs> no, that they used to go to conferences to learn about different topics, a conference at a hotel or something like that. But now they are getting what they used to get in a conference. Now they are joining webinars and lives in the beginning of the pandemic, they couldn't work. They are dentists, so they were at home. And so they would use that time to learn about their job through those conferences online. It was a totally different experience for them, but it is one example of how these changes made people learn more online. Wow. Okay. That explains yeah. why you have such beautiful teeth too. <laughs> <laughs> Two parents who are dentists like, Hey, did you brush your teeth? <laughs> no, brush your teeth before you go to bed. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's, it's funny, but it's true. <laughs> they would do that. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned that Platzi uses Twitter a lot. Is there a reason that they chose Twitter as their main platform? We have a lot of students who are learning about software development. Our students are on Twitter, so that's why we use more Twitter. Also from experience, like my husband works in engineering and he loves Twitter too, because he gets information from other places. He hears about it first on Twitter. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yes. I just started using Twitter a couple months ago and I'm like, I've been missing a lot of stuff. <laughs> But it's great that you're there. I feel like Twitter helps me get closer. If a student needs something, sometimes if they can reach me in one place, they can reach me on Twitter and they send me a message or something. So I think it's a great way to connect. Great place. Yeah. That's true. What would you say are your top two or three tips for Twitter for someone who's just starting? Since you only have a few characters. Think very well what you're going to write and also the use of hashtags that has helped a lot, especially in our events. We use the Platzi English hashtag to know when people are doing our courses or talking about our English program and our English challenges. Now, some people might be thinking, well, why do you need to have anything in Portuguese? A lot of Portuguese speakers understand Spanish. So why is it important to have something in your own language? For people in Brazil with their identity, with their language, they prefer to have content in Portuguese, but they also learn a lot of English. There are uh, a lot of people, especially uh, those who are working in software development, the engineers, most of them know Portuguese and English. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because they could be also learning Spanish because it's so similar to Portuguese. It might be even easier for them, but since most of the content they consume is in Portuguese or English, then they study more English than Spanish. Okay. That makes sense. Now let's go to the blog post you made recently, even though it's, it's for your course, Curso Básico de Portugués para Hispano Hablantes, basic Portuguese for Spanish speakers. This applies to everyone. Some of these are new already, but others are like, ah, oh, that's a good idea. Or I didn't realize I was doing that. <laughs> so let's talk about some of those. So you had seven tips to improve your pronunciation in another language. If you don't have anybody to practice with. 
Yes, and I got this idea actually from our students, our English school students, because they would ask that, how can you get better? How can you learn? So usually it's practice, it takes practice. And then they would ask, yeah, but who do I practice with? So that's why I wanted to write this blog post. It also talks about our English courses it can, because it can be applied to any language because it's about how to practice. So it's a lot of creativity. Start speaking to your dog in the language you are learning. And it has happened to me. I have tried doing it also on my own, like learning Italian. So I would maybe like be brushing my hair in the morning and, and be like, okay, how do I say comb or to comb my hair? How would I describe my routine? in in italian and if i don't know a word then i would write it down and then look for it okay this is how you say it so yes it's a lot of that of being creative changing the language in your phone for your computer everything a lot of watching movies series podcasts you really have to like the language and to want to get better and, and learn to have those ideas to think okay i need more I need more. What do I do? <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's why I also wanted to, to do this blog post. I got these ideas from team members, also from things that I do, and also from the community, since we have a large community of students in, in Platzi and we have this group in Telegram and a lot of people say, oh, I use this app, for example, to practice or let's practice right now. So they get together and practice as well. <laughs> So yes, so yet you have to really, really want to get better to find these strategies and use them. I like how Platzi has that community though. Everybody's looking out for each other. It's nice. Yes, it's, it's one of our, our superpowers <laughs> and, <laughs> and yes, a lot of students who learn something, then they teach it to someone else, which is also a way of learning. You see that even in the courses, like where you leave your comments and questions that students answer other students' questions. It's very nice having that type of community that cares for each other and that teaches what they learn as well. You talked about imitating. You said, talk to yourself. That really helps. But the two that people often want to try to do, but they don't do it quite right are recording themselves and also measuring their progress. So could you explain how you're actually supposed to do that to see results? What I would do and what I have done is record myself, maybe something that I'm reading and I look for some text that I can read according to my level. So I would record myself every week and then I could try again that same text, maybe one or two weeks after to see how I've made progress and to see if I have a better pronunciation than I used to have. It's also a good idea to have key results. For example, in one week, I want to listen to a podcast. I want to watch five classes. I want to, let's say, watch a series. I want to practice on Duolingo. So making those small goals will help you improve and, and just trying to get a little bit in every day. So a way also to know if you're getting better is when you are talking to yourself like, ah, okay, I know how to describe my routine because I already looked for this word. So I think that's a way you can tell you've gotten better. And that also motivates you to keep going, to keep learning more. Yeah. You got to use those smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> there might be some people in the audience. They're like, yeah, learning a language is nice, but how does it help me? So, Carol, how can that help you money-wise? It can help a lot. It's fun, but it's also... <laughs> I'm blanking out on the English word. Help me. It's <laughs> lucrative. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It, we actually searched for some of these numbers. It can increase your possibilities of getting a better job by 70%. 70, that's a lot. And 80% of job offers of a high level have English as one of the requirements. Speaking from my experience, most of the jobs that I have uh, gotten have been because of, of Portuguese, <laughs> because a lot of people learn English and a lot of people have that. But if you have one more language, it gives you a competitive advantage and job opportunities, Gabby, but also I think when traveling and, and traveling also makes you have 
a different perspective of everything. It can also be considered beneficial. I would ask someone like, where have you been? Where have you traveled? Or do you know about this culture? It's very, very important to have that global mindset. <laughs> Even if you can't travel right now in your neighborhood, once the pandemic is over, maybe you have people who speak a different language. I've seen people that when they're speaking to you in the language that you know, versus the language that they know is like a completely different person. <laughs> yes, that's true. It's like a transformation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just talking about how much of a difference it makes to hear the, the language of your heart. These two people, there were two older men and the language we were doing the volunteer work in wasn't their dominant language. It seemed like they were very shy. They'd, they would just say yes or no to most things. But as soon as we switched it to their dominant language, we couldn't get them to be quiet. They had all these words stored up inside of them. They're like, I'm so happy. I can't believe it. They're like, okay. <laughs> yes. When you're learning the language, or it's not your dominant language, as you mentioned, we use the words that we know. So we try to get our point across with, with what we know so that we can get understood. So that's why it's very important to acquire vocabulary so that you are able to express yourself freely and say everything you want to say, like you want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. There's mm -hmm. one thing that I use when I'm learning an, another language, I call it six, two, five, 25, five. Do you want to guess what it means? No, it sounds like a phone number, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so what I mean when I say that they say to go up a level, you need 625 new words. So I add that 625 words plus 25 new verbs in the top five tenses. So that's how I break past the A2 level to get to at least B1 in most of the languages that I deal with. I love that. I, I saw a video uh, that talked about this. There are some lists of the top 1000 words in a certain language. You would write down those words and then try to pronounce them and record yourself pronouncing it. They also mentioned that what you mentioned, the verbs and also the tenses. So it's a great way to, to learn. Yeah, it does help for someone who's listening. They're like, okay, what's a tense? What are the top five tenses? So the five top tenses would be present, past, future. And then you have in between there, the present continuous and the past continuous. That's how I remember it. Great. I, right now I'm, I think I'm in the past and just a simple past because I'm still starting off. <laughs> yeah, that's good. The past continuous and the present continuous. That's when you get a little bit intermediate because that's two verbs at the same time. Don't stress yourself out at the beginning people. Yes. When I started, I wanted to get a lot in like study an hour, two hours per day, and then it would get to a point where, okay, no, maybe it's better to break it down. I would retain more information if I would do it like in small blocks, but every day and not skip a day, seven days a week, at least a little bit. That is very helpful. When you're talking small blocks, how small are we talking about? 30 minutes per day. That's good. Just yeah. like exercise. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the least, the least I could do. But that just focus studying, getting in the computer and turning notifications off and concentrating on the class and on doing the exercises. 30 minutes, very well spent. With your 30 minutes, what do you usually do? What are you studying? I'm studying at an academy for Brazilians who are learning Italian. So I, I feel that has been an easier way since Portuguese and Italian are so similar. I have those classes. They are also recorded. After I do a class, I, there's this exercise called memorization hack, and it is to memorize the words that you learn in the lesson and practice it. So you see the phrase and then you say, okay, this was easy or this was more difficult. So you practice a little bit uh, with that every day. And I also practice on Duolingo. So both. Okay. Is it Anki that you're using for that memorization hack? That's the one I use. 
No, it's actually an, an academy. They don't have the same languages that we have, in, but they have German, Italian, other languages. It's called Fluency Academy. They have those type of recorded courses to reinforce. I also study on Duolingo. I started off with Duolingo, but I felt like I wanted more to understand more because I feel like Duolingo is more like memorizing uh, a lot of words and, and the phrases that you learned in the app. That's why I wanted to, to study more. Yeah, it's important to have more than one method. That's really cool. Yes. <laughs> and it's fun because you have different inputs from different places. You, you see how you've gotten better and you see how, oh, okay, I can speak to a native person now. I think it's very like satisfying to see the progress you make. Yeah. For me, it's more like, yeah, in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In, in my head too. <laughs> so Carol, you've been saying, yeah, you gotta love the language and do this. So why Italian? I want to know. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's interesting because, well, my grandmother from uh, my mother's side, her grandparents were Italian. And so there's a, a little bit of a background there from Italy. Also, since I like singing, when I started learning how to sing, I, I took some opera lessons. I also was part of an opera, which was in Italian. It's called Il Pagliacci. I think that's where it started because I felt like, oh, I want to know more about this. We went to Italy and I fell in love with the place and the people were so, so nice. I always remember this because I thought, how can people be so sweet in, in the middle of nowhere in the streets? It was raining and there was this lady with her umbrella and we were waiting for the bus. I was getting wet and I, I was a, like a tourist. I didn't care if I was getting wet <laughs> and, and she was offering me her umbrella. I didn't know her, but I, I felt like it's so nice that she can be this nice to someone she doesn't know to a stranger. So. That's also another reason why I like Italy and, and Italians and the food is also really good. <laughs> so that's the reason. Mm. Yeah, you know, they must be sweet if a Latina is like, wow, they were so nice. That must be like another level of nice. <laughs> yes. Because, yeah. It hasn't happened to me in Latin America, someone to, to do that. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I've always had an umbrella in Latin America, but <laughs> maybe they're becoming Americanized. <gasps> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, you, you find different people uh, everywhere. There are also really nice people in, in other places. Like I, I hear a language and it's so strong, for example, German, I know you, you know, German, <laughs> but I would hear the language and I would feel like, oh, it's so strong. I don't know how people uh, are going to be there. When I went to Germany, I also <laughs> said, okay, they're so nice. The language sounds so strong, but when you speak to them, they, they were really nice to us too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Their language sounds like they're arguing most of the time, but uh -huh. they're very nice people. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. They really are. So. You can find nice people everywhere. It was like a, a misjudgment <laughs> based on language. You can't judge it from the way it sounds like. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. So Carol, I really enjoyed catching up with you. If someone wants to touch on Plasti, please mention that you or else someone can check on that Plasti Brazil and to learn Portuguese for Hispano Hablantes, please tell us those URLs. Awesome. So for Platzi Brazil, it's platzi.com.br to see those courses. If you want to learn Portuguese, you can find our courses in platzi.com slash portugues. And we are recording more courses. For now, we just have two courses to learn Portuguese, the basic and the practical. But we are also creating Portugues para Servicio al Cliente for customer service. Because there are a lot of companies that require this, a lot of call centers that require Portuguese. Also, Portugues para viajes, Portuguese for traveling, and Portugues cotidiano well, that you can use daily. Also, in English, we have more courses, Gabi. We, we have four courses being launched this week. <laughs> wow. But I'm really excited uh, about one of my new courses. It's called English for Traveling, and it's an audio course. 
it's a story about a couple that travels to New York. You are learning about their story and what they're doing there, but you're also learning vocabulary. So I am in love with this new baby, <laughs> this new <laughs> course. And it also has some classes that are going to be with virtual reality. Wow. That sounds cool. What is that? That's coming out now or coming out later? That's coming out this week, this Friday. And, and what's you, it called? Because I need to find that. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Inglés para Viajes, English for Traveling. So you can download Platzi in your phone or in your iPad or tablet, and there you can listen to the course. Since it's an audio course with just th with the three virtual reality classes, so th that's why you need to watch it or on your phone or your iPad or tablet. To watch those virtual reality classes, you need to have YouTube installed to watch it and use the glasses. It's like a, an immersion experience watching those virtual reality classes. Ooh, okay, I gotta check that out. <laughs> yes. then, you, then you tell me what you think. <laughs> okay, that sounds cool. Now, Caro, if someone wants to follow you because you are all about Plessy, but on your own, you're awesome. Caro posted a rap on Twitter <laughs> a, a couple of months ago. I still can't get that out of my head. I was I had to watch it like three times be like, is that Caro? <laughs> yeah, that's Caro. <Cato>. Whoa! <laughs> so where can people follow you? On Twitter, I'm on Twitter at Carol Bokin with a with an L. The rap was fun also uh, creating it. It was a challenge because first in a Platzi comp, they did this, this rap battle. Jess challenged me to do the rap. <laughs> and that's why I wrote the, the rap. It's the first time I write a rap and it was a lot of fun recording it. Yeah. Well, you, you crushed the boys, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was fun. Thank you so much, Carol. Next week, we are going to be talking to Israel Garcia. Israel is a LATAM startups expert, so that's going to be interesting. For those of you who are watching with us, thank you, Clever Hybrid Tribe, for coming. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram or Twitter at Clever Hybrid. And if you need help optimizing your English or to make a podcast, just like this one where we have so much fun, go ahead and check out our cleverhybrids.com website. Until next week, optimize through principles, not rules. <laughs>